Welcome and thank you for standing by. Currently, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be posted publicly. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the call over to your host for today, Omari Wooden. Thank you very much, and good afternoon, everyone. As stated, my name is Omari Wooden with the U.S. Census Bureau. I'd like to welcome everyone listening in to today's webinar of the Puerto Rico webinar series. Today's webinar is the first in a four-part series hosted by the U.S. Census Bureau. And this webinar was created to highlight the data and resources available for Puerto Rico. In addition to the data, we will also provide you with an overview of our data tools that you can use to access this data. This data is helpful for businesses looking to possibly open a new business, or expand their existing businesses by learning more about your industry. Economic development organizations also use this data to learn more about the industries at different geographic levels. Next. These webinars will take place every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with the last one being on November 13th. Each, each webinar is completely free and a great way to understand the resources the U.S. Census Bureau has to offer for you. The next webinar topic will be focusing on international trade, which will be on October 30th, again, at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please be aware that after our speakers have completed his presentation, we will open up the webinar for a Q&A. Also, we will be using the question and answer feature for us to receive your questions. So at the bottom right of your screen, you will see three dots. Once you click on those three dots, you will then have the option to ask your questions to us and we'll make sure that we respond to you. Now, some questions we'll answer in that Q&A area, but other questions we may hold for the larger group to make sure that we're sharing with everyone. Lastly, as mentioned earlier, each of these webinars will be recorded and will be available to you at a future date. You can go next. At this point, I'd like to introduce our speaker, Bobby Nunns, who's going to be providing an overview of the economic census island area, again, highlighting data in Puerto Rico. At this point, Bobby, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you for having me, Omari. My name is Bobby Nunns, and I am the Economic Census Assistant Survey Director Staff Chief here at the Economy-Wide Statistics Division of the Census Bureau. I've worked here for 25 years at the Census Bureau, every day of which has been on the economic census. I worked for several years on the retail trade part of the economic census, and then several years on the wholesale trade part. And for the past six years, I've worked on the economic census of island areas. So today I'm gonna to provide an overview of the economic census, and then I will get into the specifics of how that covers Puerto Rico. So what is the economic census? The economic census is a census of every business in the country. More specifically, it's a census of every location of every business in the country. We conduct this once every five years for years that end in two and seven, and it produces comprehensive economic statistics. And we use this as a benchmark for our other economic census. Uh, or economic, economic surveys. The economic census is conducted entirely online with one exception that I'll mention later. And it's a mandatory survey. All of the data that we collect are entirely confidential, so we don't release any statistics that would identify any individual or business. Currently, we're working on the 2022 economic census. So we collect data on calendar year 2022, so we really can't start the collection until the year's over. And we will gather figures on over 8 million employer businesses. So the scope of the economic census is businesses with paid employees. <clears throat> so of those 8 million, we will collect data directly from 4 million of them, and then the rest we will use administrative records. And when we finish, the economic census, the results will be released on our website, data.census.gov, free and available to anyone interested in them. So what is covered by the economic census? 
The economic census covers 19 industrial sectors of the North American Industry Classification System, or NAICS. And this includes about 950 industries. We will collect data on almost 8,000 products and services under the North American Product Classification System, or NAPS. We will collect basic business statistics such as sales, payroll, employment, and other industry specific topics like inventories, capital expenditures, number of hotel rooms for the accommodation industry. We collect data at nearly 21,000 geographic areas, the US overall, the individual states, metro areas, counties, places, as well as the US territories. And then we collect data on 16,000 cities and towns. And then also by each of the island areas. This slide shows the coverage of the NAICS sectors. So we cover all of the NAICS sectors except sector 11, which is agriculture. This sector is covered by the Census of Agriculture, which the USDA collects. Now for the 2022 economic census, we will be covering two industries within sector 11, although that does not apply to Puerto Rico or the other island areas. So there are over 30 million businesses in the US, but only 8 million of them have paid employees. So that's the scope of the economic census, the roughly 8 million businesses with paid employees. Now, only 4 million of them will be included in the economic census for direct collection of data. The remainder will be covered by administrative records. Of the ones that we directly collect, 700,000 or so establishments will be covered by account managers, which are employees here at the Census Bureau that work directly with some of the larger businesses to assist them with reporting. What's new for 2022? For the 22 economic census, we have a new adaptive collection instrument that includes machine learning and natural language processing. So this allows the businesses to put in search terms to highlight their specific industry or the products and services that they provide. So when we mail out the economic census, we have information on what industry the businesses are in, but that's not always correct. Or sometimes businesses change what they do. So this instrument allows them to search on their own, and that will allow the questionnaire to be tailored to their specific industry and their specific products and services. We also have an expanded outreach and communication plan for 2022. And we also have new content to capture data on emerging topics, one of which we were able to include for Puerto Rico this time, the use of business technologies such as robotics and self-serve kiosks. So who uses the economic census? Congress uses it for policymaking. Other federal agencies use it as the basis for economic activity, in particular, the Bureau of Economic Analysis. The BEA uses it as a benchmark for their gross domestic product statistics they produce for the, for the nation. So the BEA uses this in conjunction with the other current surveys that we do of the economy on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. State and local governments use it for regional planning and emergency management issues. Trade associations use it to gauge trends in their industry's products and services. Individual businesses use it for market share, product development, putting together business plans, loan applications. Researchers use it for detailed information on sales, employment and payroll. And then we here at the Census Bureau also use it to benchmark our other surveys that we do monthly, quarterly, and annual, annually. And then we also use it to update our business register which is our frame that we use for all of our economic surveys. Currently, we're working on the 2022 economic census. As I mentioned, we wait for the survey year to be over to start the collection. So on January 31st, 
we held our initial mail out to the businesses. And this included a letter with instructions on how to log into our secure portal site and how the businesses can use their specific code to log in and access their survey. We sent out due date reminders on March 1st, and then our due date was March 15th. And then ever since then, we've been doing a series of scheduled follow-ups by mail, email, robocalls, and telephone. Now you'll notice by the mail bullet, it says including paper for island areas. So we do still have paper questionnaires for the island areas. And we're working towards our closeout, which is November 17th, coming up in a couple of weeks. We had an expanded outreach campaign for 2022 that involved tailored data stories. We had an expanded outreach plan for Puerto Rico, which included high level meetings in Puerto Rico between census officials, Commerce Department employees, and stakeholders in Puerto Rico. We had a radio, print, and billboard advertising campaign. And then we also developed promotional pages in Spanish and English for respondents both in the US and in Puerto Rico. And here's an example of our tailored messaging campaign. So we have several different messaging campaigns for different parts of the US. And then including in the bottom right, you'll see there's one for San Juan. We also developed a promotional website in English and Spanish for the first time. And again, this is for respondents both in the US and in Puerto Rico. This is an example of our promotional materials in Spanish. This is a trifold brochure that was translated into Spanish. And again, we use that in the state side and the economic census of island areas. So now I'd like to talk a little more specifically about the economic census of island areas. So this covers the five permanently inhabited U.S. territories, American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the largest, of course, Puerto Rico. Now the U.S. has other territories, but only these five have permanent populations. So only these five are included in the economic census. <clears throat> so who uses the economic census of island areas? Basically the same as the stateside economic census, governments, in particular, the governments of these five island territories, they are very interested in these statistics because they're the only collections of detailed data about their economies, businesses, academics, et cetera. And the main user of our data is the BEA for their GDP estimates for the five island territories. We don't have those monthly, quarterly, and annual surveys of the economy. So BEA uses this five-year economic census to inform their GDP statistics going forward the next five years. So a little history of the economic census. The Census Bureau has collected statistics on Puerto Rico's economy since soon after it became a territory. There was a census of manufacturers in 1909 and 1919, and then gradually other sectors were added, and then it's been conducted as part of a regular economic census since 1949, tracking the development of the state's ad economic census. And the other four territories have been included and expanded in the latter part of the 20th century. So what is the economic census of island areas? Is it the same thing as the economic census or not? And the answer is yes. It is part of the overall economic census. It has the same OMB approval number, uses the business register as the frame for the mail out, the same mail out and data capture processes, same dissemination system, same and similar data items, we do the same types of analysis and editing of the response data that we get back. And then we have the same reference periods, years that end in two and seven. But there are some big differences, the biggest of which is that these islands have much smaller economies than the overall US. 
Also, we don't do sampling in this program. So previously I showed this slide where there were 8 million employer businesses, but we only collect data directly from 8 million of them. I mean, from 4 million of them, sorry. In the economic census of island areas, we mail to the entire universe. We also collect via eight sector specific questionnaires. So as an example, the wholesale trade sector of the stateside economy uses 87 different questionnaire types to collect their data. Whereas in the island areas, we just have one sector to cover all of wholesale trade. And that's because we're publishing at a higher level of the NAICS structure. We also still have paper forms. And this comes in handy because of the weather that can impact these areas. And also there are connectivity issues in some of the smaller islands. So the biggest difference of course is the size. In 2017, Puerto Rico had 42,559 establishments and over 188 billion in combined revenue. So how does that compare to the overall US? Where would Puerto Rico be if it were a state? So Puerto Rico would actually have more establishments than 14 states. It would have more revenue than 15 states. So it compares favorably to some of the smaller states, but still compared to the overall US, it's much smaller. So in the island areas, a lot of these areas can be dominated by one employer or one industry. This is an example of Puerto Rico's revenue by sector in the 2017 economic census and you can see the dominance of manufacturing. Now it's not quite so dominant when you look at the employment. This is more of an even distribution with retail being the largest by employment, but it's an example of how manufacturing can dominate and you just wouldn't see that in the overall state side economy. So what type of data do we have for Puerto Rico? For 2022, we will be releasing 49 tables with data about Puerto Rico. We have two tables to release basic statistics on sales, payroll, and employment. One of those tables will be a comparative table with data from 2022 compared to 2017. We have four tables that release product line statistics on the NAPS basis. Three of those will be specific to the accommodation sector. We have five tables that release data on the establishment and revenue size of the businesses. We have 15 tables that release a variety of other categories like e-commerce, the status of shopping center location, and the ownership of the businesses. And then we have 23 ta tables that release detailed statistics on the manufacturing and construction industries like cost of materials, value added, now, previously I mentioned that we don't have the monthly, quarterly, and annual surveys of the economy for these island areas. And in 2017, when the two hurricanes affected Puerto Rico, we really had no way to gauge the impact of the hurricane on the economy since the only statistics we had were from five years previously on 2012. But we do have some statistics in here that could be of relevance. This graph shows the quarterly construction workers in 2017 for Puerto Rico. So you'll see the first three quarters, the number is roughly 15,000. And then there's a big jump to almost 20,000 in the fourth quarter. So that could be contributed or attributed to an increase in recovery efforts for the hurricane. So we have a lot of detailed statistics that were released. We also release a lot of detailed geographic data for Puerto Rico. We will release statistics on the territory overall, by municipio, which is a county equivalent, by metropolitan, micropolitan area, by combined statistical area, 
of which there are three in Puerto Rico, Mayaguez, Ponce, and San Juan, and then by the planning regions, which are combinations of municipios. This table shows the release schedule for 2022. So the first data from 2022 will be released in the first look report in March. That's just for the stateside US. All of the island areas data will be released in June and July of next year for the four smaller territories and then December of 2024 for Puerto Rico. And this is an accelerated schedule. We had previously planned to release Puerto Rico in June of 2025, but now we moved that up six months. So our plan is December of 2024. And then the rest of the stateside data will be will be released over the next year or two up until March 2026. And all of our data will be released at our dissemination site data.census.gov, free and available to anyone interested in them. That was all I had for today. Be glad to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Bobby. Um, so at this point, we are going to now open it up for questions. Uh, one of the great things is we have received a couple of questions already in the chat, Bobby, so I will share those with you. Um, as a reminder to everyone listening in, uh, to the bottom right of your screen, you'll see the three dots. You select the three dots and then select Q&A option. That will give you the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, so, Bobby, what I'll do is I will share a couple of questions that we got in the chat, and then you can feel free to answer them. Um, so there's one question. Can you talk about the differences between the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the Economic Census? Uh, I'm not up to date on the Bureau of Labor Statistics data products, but uh, they don't publish data at detailed geographic and industry levels like we do. Um, I think they mainly produce the price statistics. Yeah, Bobby, I'll, I'll jump in. This is Mike Sprung that um, you know, traditionally I'm not I'm not I'm not 100 percent certain what they have for available for Puerto Rico, but traditionally Bureau of Labor Statistics data would be, they'll publish employment by a, an occupation versus what the economic census data would produce, and that's um, the employment by an industry type. But that's, that's certainly one of the key differences in, in the data that they have, that we have from them. Cool, thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, Another question that came in, um, do you gather data? And one of the things too, to, to this question, do we gather data in education, including public schools? No, that's not covered by the economic census. Typically schools would be covered in the census of governments, which does not currently include Puerto Rico, but I think we are hoping to start including it soon. Right, and one thing also to add to that answer as well, um, while the Census Bureau, we capture um, probably and release over 70 different surveys, economic surveys and programs on an annual basis. So what we're highlighting today is the economic census. And again, that is also a part of this series where we'll be touching different industries and different surveys that are capturing information for Puerto Rico. So there are other survey products that we have again, that are now speaking to education, whereas the economic census is focusing on employer businesses. So just wanted to just add that to, to that response as well. All right, uh, let's see what other questions we have. Oops, something just popped up in my chat. Other things keep popping up as I'm trying to scroll down, give me a second. Uh, so a question more so this problem. So there was a question in particular about specific sectors such as telemarketing. The question is, 
how do you find the number of business? Can you just talk about how businesses would use data.census.gov? So necessarily we won't pull up the data, but if someone were interested in getting that type of information you had mentioned, data.census.gov, what would be your recommendations to people using that tool if they were interested? It's a very easy tool to use. You know, I showed the slide with uh, the search box. Let's see. Um, so you can type in various things right here where it says, you know, find tables, maps, and more. You could just type in Puerto Rico, and then it would start, you know, give you a list of everything that had data about Puerto Rico in it. Or you could type in telemarketing, and it would give you tables that had data about telemarketing. Then you can kind of filter and refine to get more what you want. Like if you wanted the 2017 economic census data, you can put in 2017. So it's very easy to use. Um, you could go with this search like here, typing in stuff, or, you know, there are search functions. You can look through lists to pick out what you want. Yeah, and I think that 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 answer also would apply to. I think I saw a question earlier about uh, ocean economy. If you would, you could go in and group industries associated with ocean economy and look at results uh, for them in an aggregate at an aggregate level too. I think. And also too, I'd like to add a comment to those that are following. So appreciate certainly appreciate the questions. Uh, one of our colleagues, Lorena, has actually provided a few links in the chat feature. So again, we're talking about offering uh, your questions in the Q&A feature, but also you'll see in the chat feature, she provides a link to data.census.gov, even a discussion of uh, econ census capturing data at a higher level um, with references related to BLS as well. So again, just wanna make sure that you all take a look at some of the links that are provided. So again, that was one of the benefits of today's webinar was to try to provide as many experts across the spectrum to make sure that we're trying to answer your questions today. So let me go and see if we have any other questions that have come in. So I will say, uh, Bobby, while I'm actually double checking, I wanted to see if you could tell us about some business examples where businesses have used this data. Um, you had mentioned that a lot of businesses use it. Can you give an example of um, the years that you've worked with um, the data where you see, okay, here's how a business used this information? Well, like I mentioned in the slide, a lot of them use it for uh, business plans. So, you know, if you had a company that had a location in San Juan, say, and they wanted to expand to other parts of Puerto Rico, they could easily get numbers of establishments in that industry by municipio all across the island. So they could easily tell, um, you know, how many businesses would be in different parts of the island to pick out where they might want to expand. They can also use it for business loans Okay, cool. Thank you. We see that as well, too, where, again, sometimes a bank, uh, when you're writing a business loan or a grant proposal, one question that a bank will have is, well, how many other businesses are just like yours in that particular geography or in that particular region? So that is certainly something that's really helpful. Um, one question that came through is, can you clarify why Puerto Rico data co is collected at a higher NICS code than the rest of the United States? Mainly just due to the size, so it's harder to publish statistics on lower and lower levels of industry and geography, the fewer number of establishments you have. So, you know, I mentioned the wholesale trade, they have 87 different form types because they publish down to the seven and eight digit NAICS level. So, you know, if we're not going to publish to that level, we don't need to collect at that level. Um, <clears throat> Also, like, you know, the slide that I showed comparing Puerto Rico to some of the states, like Idaho was one of the similar states. Um, you know, you probably couldn't release that level of NAICS detail if you just released statistics on Idaho. But, you know, since the economic census is nationwide, you can publish much more detail. Um, Bobby, looks like we got another we got a question about, a couple questions about when the data will be released. Maybe just clarify that. Sure. So in June, 
and July of 2024, we will release the four smaller statistics. And then December of 2024, we will release Puerto Rico. Right. And we released all of our data at once for each territory. So the slide that I showed about the different data releases for stateside data, they have multiple releases, whereas we just release everything in one release. So the 49 tables that contain data for Puerto Rico will all be released at once next December. All right, so December 2024 will be the 2022 economic census results for Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And right, and so currently now what would, well, all that's available would be that 2017, yes. See right. that yes, but this will be the earliest we've ever been able to release statistics for the island areas. So Bobby, here's a question. Um, given that you had mentioned that all businesses in Puerto Rico are incorporated in econ census employer businesses, um, in particular, how would a business know if they were unsure if they had received the economic census survey to fill out? How can they confirm that they are a part of the universe? And then what should they do if they need to know if they need to respond? Um, if they didn't receive anything in the mail, then they wouldn't be subject to it. Uh, if they're questioning whether they, you know, the mail didn't go to the right place or something, they could check, like you could call us and ask, we could verify based on their employer identification number. But typically if they don't get anything in the mail or an email from us, then they're not subject to it. But it does cover all businesses with paid employees in Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah, I have a comment that at times that the addresses in Puerto Rico at times can be a challenge. So some businesses maybe received it, maybe they didn't, but that can certainly be a challenge that we're trying to work through. Yes, yeah, absolutely right. right. And and Bobby, what we so where we could after a certain number of follow ups, if we had an alternate address, we did send letters to an alternate address later on in the in the cycle this past year. Yes. So we collect statistics on the or not statistics but we keep information on the mailing address and the physical address of the business so uh, if one address doesn't work we will use the other one too so there's a question about uh if there's any hard copy of data being provided that is uh not going to be the case everything will be <laughs> everything will be available uh, electronically on the census website yeah, years ago, we used to publish or, or put out little booklets for the entire economic census um, printed reports, but we don't do that anymore. Would uh, non nonprofit businesses be included? Yes, some nonprofits are included in the scope of the economic census. So one thing I want to do right here is just pause for a quick second because I appreciate the questions that are coming in. One thing I do want to do is as questions are coming in, so if people are having more questions, this will give you an opportunity to go into the um, Q&A feature to ask that. Bob, if you could go to the next two slides um, and one more. So what I want to do just in, and then back one is to just mention again, the upcoming webinars. Our next webinar in this series is going to be focusing on international trade data. Uh, we'll then be talking about county business patterns that, again, has information in Puerto Rico and then also one of our data tools called Census Business Builder. And then we'll then dive into workforce and then small business data that we have on November 13th. So, again, I just want to take that opportunity to just pause and talk about the upcoming webinars that we have. Bobby, if you go to the next slide. And again, we're still taking questions, but again, I just wanted to make sure I share these before because I know once webinars start to close, people start to log off, that we do want to make sure that we're sharing the importance of our surveys and ultimately of the content that we are providing. So what we'd like to do at this opportunity is, Lisa, if you can, if you can drop the uh, URL for our evaluation, that again, as we're still receiving questions, but if we wanted to take this opportunity to make sure that we add a link in the chat feature that will allow you to give us comments, give us feedback as it relates to um, our webinars, our training, what did we do well today? What did we do that could be better to make sure that we're meeting your needs? 
Um, so we were going to make sure that we post that in the chat. And again, it only takes a few minutes, but again, it is a big help and it allows us to shape our content and our training and our materials. So I did just want to take a quick pause for that. And now we can go back to the questions. So again, appreciate the questions that we've got coming in. Uh, one thing that I did want to add on uh, as it relates to Puerto Rico, sometimes we get questions related to, do we have stakeholder engagement? How do we engage with communities in terms to raise awareness? So one of the things that we certainly do, Bobby, including himself, some of our other colleagues, have been in Puerto Rico, again, meeting with trade associations, business association, chamber of commerce, um, officials, because again, in many cases, they also act as trusted voices for us. So we're sharing about the importance of the data, the importance it is to respond. So that's one of the great ways that census as a whole is partnering with stakeholders in a sense where their boots right there on the ground. So we're always looking for opportunities to work with stakeholders, work with communities, work with local associations to again, remind them about the importance of the data that we have available. So let's see if we have any other questions that were queued. Uh, Bobby, someone asked, yeah, for some clarification on um, the comparison with Puerto Rico as uh, if it were a state compared with the, uh, the, the, the 50 states plus DC. Um, the question says it has 15 states doing worse than Puerto Rico. I, I, you wouldn't say <laughs> doing worse, right? It's, it's no, no. they just have less, less uh, the, the numbers you put up were for a number of establishments. Is that right? Yes. Right, and combined revenue. Okay. So for Puerto Rico and the other territories, we release a total NAICS level, sort of like if you summed up all of the NAICS sectors, we release what we call a NAICS sector zero zero number. Uh, the state side economic census doesn't do that, but the way I got those numbers was just basically to add up the numbers for each of the sectors in that state. So it's not really a um, indication of how Puerto Rico is performing economically versus states. It's just to show the size, like number of establishments and combined revenue. Right, and the number it, it was it is it 188 million or is 180 billion? Correct, 188 billion, billion, billion yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, in sales in 2017. Right. So I can go back to that slide. Yeah, please. Yeah. So, you know, I just added up the revenue of all the different sectors for each of the states and then compared it to the sector zero zero line that we published for Puerto Rico. And so, you know, it's has more combined revenue than 15 US states. I see another question about um are there new industries emerging? I, I, I guess the answer to that is we will uh, we will see as we uh, as we tabulate and prepare the results from uh, the 2022 census here. Also, Bobby, a question came up. So you went to this slide. If you could go back to slide 29 with the release dates, someone was wondering if you could post the release dates so we can just have that back up on the screen again. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, there was a question too. Um, are there any plans possibly for 2027 um, for given the popularity of the Spanish content, any considerations for the Spanish content also being available for our online um, instrument? Yes, I think that's a high priority for the 2027 economic census. Currently we have Spanish language paper questionnaires for the respondents, but not right. electronic, but that's a high priority for us. Okay, great. So there's also a question of how do we collect interstate commerce data? So again, that goes back to the discussion of other economic surveys and programs that we have at the Census Bureau. So that would be something that would be caught, captured under our commodity flow survey which is also a five-year survey, a five-year program that measures movement of interstate commerce. Again, and that is movement inside of the United States, so that's not in the economic census. 
Uh, we'll be talking about international trade. Specifically, we'll be talking about goods that are moving uh, between the U.S. and Puerto Rico, but we'll also talk about goods that are moving from Puerto Rico going foreign. So while economic census has a component, there are also many other surveys and programs that capture other types of industries, not only other types of industries, but other types of ways that we're measuring the economy, whether it be through workforce, whether it be through international trade, and even interstate commerce. I just wanted to mention that to one of the questions as well. So I will say for the one question that I see, can you show us an example? One of the things, so this is the uh, promotional item where one, to ask you to come back, but also two, there are also um, other, other webinar series that I believe the link was posted in the chat where we do a deeper dive into hands-on demonstrations of how to use our tool. On November 6th, we're gonna be doing uh, a demonstration of the Census Business Builder, which is a hands-on tool that allows you to get into the deeper geography. Thank you, Bobby. Um, that allows you to get into the deeper levels of geography for Puerto Rico, and we'll walk you through how to use that tool. But again, as I believe Lorena posted in the chat as well, there have also been other series where there are deeper dives on data tools. So again, one of the things to just also complete the circle, this is one part of this webinar series that we're providing so much information. So some of those other webinars we're gonna be providing uh, will be a deeper dive on the data tools, whereas today was an overview of the economic census island areas. Uh, speaking of going back to the release dates, in the chat, I posted a link to the uh, the current planned release schedule, and I, I use the word planned because if you go to it and look at the island area statistics, you'll see for Puerto Rico, the planned release date was actually June of 2025 when we put this page together, and it has since been moved up to December 2024. So. Uh, in the case of Puerto Rico, we've moved up the date by six months for well, six months from when we plan to release that data. And I'll make a note to follow up with the web team to make sure that gets updated soon. <laughs> uh, Bobby, one last thing. If you could put your um, cursor, oh, I'm sorry, put your cursor. If you could actually scroll down to your last slide that just has your contact information, because there's some questions of, you know, more information and so forth. So just to show you, this is Bobby's contact information. Again, Bobby, thank you for the great details. Mike, thank you for uh, jumping on as well to address some of the questions. Here's some of our contact information. So Bobby's direct information is available. You can also reach out to our data user and trade outreach branch, and they can at least, if not answer the question, possibly put you in touch with the area that may have more details to your particular question. Uh, one of the questions that was just posed is how can we get a hold of this presentation? This presentation is being recorded and will be available. Um, I know there's a time frame that it takes to develop the transcript and to lock all this presentation in, but this presentation will be available online and will be posted. Okay, thank you, Lisa, right on cue. So this will be available probably two weeks um, after today. So make sure you're on the lookout for that so that it will be available so you can follow up on any of the details that we had uh, shared with you all today. So Omari, I see, uh, I yes. do see also another question about how to, uh, if we can walk through using the search feature, and I, I, I'd say we're probably not prepared to do a demo of that right now, but maybe that's an idea for a potential future webinar. I'm, I'm sure that as we get close to releasing data, we'll, we'll, um, we'll have some, some way to do a webinar that that uh, explains how to access the data and use the use the tools that we have. Agree, agree. So again, as I mentioned earlier, with feedback, that's one of the things that we'll make, certainly make sure that we incorporate uh, to make sure that we can have that included in some way in our future presentation. So appreciate that, Bobby. There's another. There's a question about. Uh, the data being aggregated at a at a higher level for Puerto Rico or the other island areas, uh, and and does that prevent it from being easily compared with with some of the stateside data? Um, do you have any experience or, or comments you want to make on that? 
No, it doesn't keep it from, you know, being compared to stateside data. It's just harder to publish at a lower, more detailed NAICS level when you don't have as many establishments. You know, so if Puerto Rico had roughly 43,000 establishments, um, similar to Idaho. So, you know, we couldn't publish seven or eight digit detail on lots of the industries if we were just publishing stuff in Idaho. So it's kind of the the same thing there, but right. but it's you know you can still compare it you know, right? The states this uh, data are rolled up at states some of the smaller states or where there's fewer of a certain industry. Uh, data are aggregated in states just the same way that they are in uh, for Puerto Rico, right? Right. So like you know one of the more detailed codes like would be um, a wholesale lumber yard that has lumber in a yard versus lumber not in a yard. That's a level of detail that we wouldn't publish in Puerto Rico, but you can publish it if you're publishing at the US level. You probably can't publish it for Idaho either, you know, but if you just are dealing with 43,000 establishments, you can't publish that level of NAICS detail. Right. Because, you know, when you look at the number of wholesale establishments, I think roughly Puerto Rico has about 2,000 wholesale establishments. Um, so it just gets thin when you're, when you're dealing with a smaller area. Yeah, I guess the, the right way to say it for me, what I should have said was Puerto Rico and, and the states, the smaller states, right? The 14 or 15 states with less establishments all suffer from similar, similar need for aggregation to protect the identity of individual businesses, which we take extremely seriously um, right. in the information that we release. Yeah. Uh, there's another question about consideration for adding variables uh, to the collection of census data in the future. And, and we can almost link that to the question above asking about response right now. Um, the, the response numbers always change and I don't have the exact numbers right now, but uh, when it comes to adding questions, I, I think that we, we always carefully review the content from one economic census to the next, and we, we carefully weigh the amount of burden that we're placing on respondents and try to keep that as low as possible because too much burden would low, in turn lowers our response, which isn't good either, and be able to, to produce robust data, we need to get as much response as we can. Yeah, we do a rigorous process. You know, when we start planning the next economic census, we put out a notice in the Federal Register saying we're preparing the next economic census. We invite comments from the public. Um, we also reach out to various stakeholders. You know, this is stateside and island areas part, you know, to ask the relevant stakeholders, are there things you want changed? You know, that doesn't mean we're going to, but, you know, we solicit their input and Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but yes, we go through a, a whole process to determine if we're going to add something. I can't remember if we answered this one or not. Uh, it asked about the uh, the universe of businesses in Puerto Rico. Um, that's the 18, the 18 NAICS that you mentioned. If you, I guess you can go back to that slide. It's the, uh, there's 19 on the slide, but the ag services isn't covered in Puerto Rico, right? Right. The two new industries that the economic census is covering does not include Puerto Rico. So it's employer employer establishments in all these industries except 11. Yes, uh, there's few a few exceptions in here. You know, like for sector 48, you know, we don't include the postal service. But for the agriculture it's the two support activities that were added to the economic census. But the rest of that sector is out of scope. I see any more questions? Mari, you see any others? No, I think we've covered it. So again, I'd like to thank you, Bobby, for I think a great presentation. Mike, appreciate you jumping in, adding your expertise. Um, as you can see, um, actually, Bob, if you could put your contact information back up, 
uh, just for that last slide. As we mentioned earlier, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to Bobby. If you have data user questions broadly, feel free to reach out to the data user and trade outreach area. We'll keep this slide up now. I want to thank you again. As a reminder, our next webinar will be on international trade, which will be on October 30th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where again, we'll be discussing trade data from the U.S. Census Bureau, focusing on international trade, specifically focusing on Puerto Rico. So again, I thank you all for attending. At this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Lisa for our closing announcements. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time.